All right, hey everyone out there in Banjo Land, Mike Heading here, coming to you today with another little mini lesson. This is a great uh, lesson for beginners that are just getting used to some of the roles, or a you know beginner or intermediate player that's kind of struggling to start improvising. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some basic roles you can use, and then I'm going to give you some basic left hand notes to kind of actually make some music with your roles, so you're not just playing open strings or chords. We're going to actually get you moving your left hand around and what we're going to work on here is getting our two hands to operate independently, which is really tough. You know, when our right hand is changing, you know, our left hand wants to do to change as well, you know, and what we got to work on is keeping our right hand the same while our left hand changes. Once you got that down, you'll there'll be no stopping you. All right, so here's the lesson in the simplest form. show you how I would you know take those notes and mix them up in a different order using some other rolls and and staying on them for different lengths of times and then I'll break it all down for you so here we go form we're going to use the same exact roll every time so sometimes they call this the thumb index thumb middle roll I've heard it called the square roll so it's with your right hand you're going to do thumb index thumb middle starting on the third string then you're going to do index on the second string then your fifth uh, thumb back up to the fifth string and then your middle on the first string sounds like this one of the first rolls that most people learn. Um, if that's still giving you a little challenge, you can even make it simpler. Just make it a pinch. So I'm hitting a thumb on the third string, and then I'm pinching the outside strings. By pinching, I just mean I'm plucking the strings at the same time. So I'm using my thumb and my middle finger on the outside strings. Okay, but yeah, but try the roll first. going to do is we're going to add some left hand notes and what, what I want you to work on is keeping your right hand the exact same and we're going to work on moving our left hand around without changing our right hand which is really tough. Um, again once our left hand starts getting in the mix for most people you know the right hand starts changing and that's that's what we want to avoid and that's what we're going to practice. Okay so now that we got the right hand down let's let's look at the left hand notes that we need. Okay so our first one they're all going to be on the third string. So our first one is open, so just no frets. Our second one, and I'm going to use my middle finger for all these, but you can try which works best for you, is our second fret. So open, and then second fret. Then up to the fourth fret, and then the fifth fret, and then the seventh fret. And then you can go backwards. First five notes of a G major scale. You know, kind of a, a dueling banjos thing. Okay, so those are our notes. And we can stay on each of them as long as we need to. Um, you know, especially when you're starting, stay on them for a while. Stay on one for a half hour if you need to. Okay, so I'll stay on them for a little bit just to show you. Now I'm going to add the second fret. Keep your right hand moving.
you do that properly, there really is no break in your right hand. You shouldn't you shouldn't be stopping between those notes. It's not You know, you have to move your hand within the roll and that's what we want to practice. Um, sometimes you might even need to look down at your right hand and visually verify that you're actually doing the same roll. Um, sometimes it might switch on you without even noticing. So, so really practice and make sure you're doing the same roll, okay? Okay, so again, you can stay on each one as long as you need to there. Um, but let me change a little faster. So now I'll change each measure. should be able to get that one too. Okay, so what if we changed even faster? So what if we changed in the middle of the measure? So try that. Again, um, so once you got that down, you know, the next step is, again, very rarely in music are we just going to go straight up and straight down the scale. So another thing to do would be take those five notes and mix them up in a different order. Maybe jump around a little bit. So like this. particular order of the notes there. I'm just taking those notes, open, two, four, five, and seven, and mixing them up in any order I want. Um, again, the more practice you just get moving around, the better. Um, you'll just become more familiar when the time comes. Another cool thing you can do is if you have a, a friend that plays guitar or something, they can play G, C, and D, or G, C, D, and E minor, you know, play some basic chords, and you can actually practice improvising a little bit. That's a really good, another really good benefit of this exercise is for people that are, are struggling with starting improvising, even if you just start with three notes, you know, start with the open twos and fours. Maybe you can do, you know. You know, again, it's a starting spot to, to practice mixing up the notes. That's all that improvising is in the simplest form. It's just taking some, some notes that we've kind of determined are safe and then mix them up in whatever order you want. Um, you know, try experiments, stay on one for a while, move around quick, change, you know, change fast, change slow. The more, the more options you, you try and the more you experiment, um, the better you're going to get. Um, very rarely do people just straight out of the box start improvising and playing these insanely awesome solos. So you got to throw a lot of stuff at the wall and um, be, be a little willing to fail and try stuff that might not sound too good yet. And again, the more you try this, you'll, you'll start, um, you know, kind of pushing aside the stuff that's not working and, and collecting the stuff that is working and moving forward. Okay, so, so we did that exercise with using the exact same right hand roll. So let's try a different right hand roll this time. Maybe let's do the forward reverse roll, so like this. too much harder. Okay, so you could try it with the forward roll too. Anything that's using that third string is going to work. It's also a good exercise to practice your speed if, you, if you're like, hey, I just want to get faster. Um, you know, it's a good one to kind of test the limits of how fast you can go. Okay, lastly, or one more thing you can try is, again, if you're, if you're getting familiar with playing some tunes, you, you'll kind of start to realize pretty quick that very rarely in banjo are we going to do the same roll for a really extended period of time. You're going to kind of have to get used to switching back and forth pretty quickly. So that'd be the next um, level of complexity I would add. Once you feel like you've got it down with one roll moving around, try switching back and forth between two rolls, for example. So I'll use the 
the forward, the thumb index, thumb middle roll, and the forward reverse roll, and I'll switch back and forth every time I change. Here we go. Now I'm going to change the forward reverse roll. Now I'm going to change back. So you can practice moving around, you know, do, and again, the more combinations you can come up with, the better. That's, that's improvising in itself, too, is just switching up the rolls. So, so give that a try, you know, or you could add the forward roll. You know, ideally, eventually, you can just start to roll off different rolls, and I guess that doesn't make sense, play some different rolls, and move these notes around freely and just see what you can come up with. Okay, so two more things and then we'll call it a day. Another thing you can try is changing strings. So let's say we, we get up there. So I'm there, let's see if I can change the second string. the second string up there so I was doing um, thumb on the second string and then middle on the first string and then thumb on the fifth string and then middle so thumb middle thumb middle but I'll, in the tab I'll have some different rolls you can do on that second string the forward the forward roll works well too So then you can get familiar moving around to different strings and keeping your rolls and the notes moving. Um, again, I, I really like this exercise because it gives you an excuse to practice your rolls. But if you're just doing the rolls on its own with open strings or, you know, maybe with chords, it sounds okay. But um, you can get a little bit more music work in um, and you'll actually be able to practice longer because it's going to be more interesting. Cool. So you can try moving between the strings. The last thing I would say is in the tab, I have the rest of the notes for the scale because I just gave you the first five. So let me just play those real quick. So it's open, two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, and then twelve. So that'll get you to the top of the scale. Once you got the first five notes down, then start adding more notes. Um, so again, there's so much stuff you can do with this um, beyond just the, the initial, you know, first lick that, okay, it's like, okay, maybe I got that down. Really push yourself to, to expand and try some stuff and experiment. Try changing strings. Try changing rolls. Um, try moving around. Try bigger jumps, you know. See if you can jump from way down here. <laughs> Just moving up and down you can pr there's so much stuff you can do with this little exercise it's really cool all right that'll get you started good luck